that we found out about 30 seconds ago that PJ, who was going to be facilitating this meeting, um, has no electricity. So um, I, I had already planned to ask for a lot of grace today in uh, the facilitation of this meeting. So we're going to ask for um, grace in spades um, because I'm going to be stepping in uh, in PJ's absence. Um, several housekeeping things before we really go over the agenda. One is an enormous welcome to anybody, to everybody. Let me just say an enormous welcome to everybody and a particular welcome to anybody for whom, if this is your first Troubler meeting, and if this is your first Troubler meeting, if you would put your name and your email address in the chat so we can follow up with you. We are really uh, so glad to have you here and, and please put your name and email address in the chat if you're new. Um, a reminder that uh, we ask folks to put questions and comments in the chat rather than just unmuting yourself. We're hoping to really encourage that conversation in the chat. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and um, let me also say just tremendous, um, but let, let me go over the, the, the agenda and then I'll remind folks of a couple of things. So let me share my screen for a minute. Um, okay, and before I go over the agenda, I, those of you who come regularly know that um, I usually talk a little bit about context. Um, and because this is such a busy, busy, full meeting, I'm not going to say very much about context. And the only thing I do want to say um, is two reminders, and one is that March 28th, a uh, little over two weeks from now is Sine Die, the last day of the Georgia legislative session. Um, so these next couple of weeks are the times to really watch the updates that Pat sends out. Uh, she always includes this information about how to contact your um, state senator and state representative, and it's the time to make your voice heard. Uh, on any issues that you feel strongly about, because we are in home stretch, and this is the second, this is the end of the two year session. Um, also, a reminder that um, this Tuesday is the presidential primary. Uh, so, a fairly important day. Uh, a number of folks on the call are working either as poll watchers or poll workers. Our great gratitude to you. Um, so we are very, very, very grateful for those folks and a reminder to vote if you haven't already. Um, I want to um, also, Pat Wache is not on the, on the call right now, but Pat Wache, with support from Pat Bird, is the one who is really responsible for um, kind of the show running, putting the agenda together. She does an amazing job. It's a big piece of work. Thank you so much. And really great gratitude to Mary Lou McCloskey for putting together the PowerPoint slides. Uh, this is always a great team effort. Um, and let me also say that one of the things about having a, a group that has um, a lot of um, a lot of us who are in the older demographic is that there are a lot of folks even on this call tonight who have pretty full buckets and um, lots of love to all of you. And thank you for being here. and. Uh, we are all in this together. So, um, so our agenda. We are extraordinarily fortunate today to have the new um, voter protection director in Georgia with us. Uh, so we will be beginning our meeting with a with a discussion about voter protection in Georgia in 2024. Hugely, hugely, hugely important um, area, arena, information, conversation. And then we're going to be talking about um, how we will be supporting the candidates that Necessary Trouble has chosen for this year. And then we are so lucky 
that we have two troublers who are actually running for office this year, and we are so very proud of them, Dominique Cooper and Gareth Fenley, and we're going to hear from both of them, and we're going to really give them a boost and um, some support and hear about um, their races, and then we're going to be talking about some updates and events. So that's our agenda, and uh, it's a full meeting, so we're going to try to keep things moving along as, as well as we can. Um, time-wise. So on that, on that note, I'm going to turn this over to Leslie High, who is our team, who is the Troubler team leader for voter protection, um, to announce our uh, speaker. Thanks, Becky. Um, so I serve as the uh, VOPRO team leader along with uh, Pam Wache, and we're following in the footsteps of Martha Laird and Brown who did that so beautifully in the past. And uh, so I'm the lucky one who gets to introduce you to Cecilia Ugarte Baldwin today and uh, to belatedly welcome her to Georgia <laughs> with a lot of gratitude. Cecilia is the new Voter Protection Director for the Democratic Party of Georgia. And uh, just by a little bit of background, she's a great champion of voter protection. She ran the voter protection program in Ohio for the 2022 midterm elections, which I can't even imagine what that was like. Um, and most recently, she has served as the Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy and Cabinet Affairs for the Massachusetts Governor, Mara Healy. And that's really just the top of a long list of um, uh, government campaign and election work that Cecilia has done. So we're on our team, very excited to meet her, to hear about what's going to be happening in Georgia. And I have just one thing to ask of troublers while we're listening to Cecilia's uh, comments about the voter protection. If you would like to join the, the Necessary Trouble VoPro team, uh, for, please put your name in the chat. And particularly if you hear something that interests you, let us know what exactly sounded interesting to you about voter protection, because there may be multiple projects coming up. Give us your phone number if that's the best way to reach you, and we'll follow up. Either Pam or I will be in touch. So with that, I'd like to ask uh, Cecilia to tell us all the great things she has in mind for Georgia for this year. <laughs> Well, Leslie, thank you so much. And everyone, I am really, really excited to be here with you today. I have heard such great things about this group and the, the contributions you have given to democracy in the past. And so I'm really looking forward to engaging with you. I know this will just be, this is the first of what will be many com conversations over uh -huh. the of years, and I say years, and I'll get into that in a second, but uh, my gratitude is, is first and foremost with you. So thank you so much for all that you have done for democracy in Georgia. Um, as I said, I'm really excited to get into Georgia. Right now I'm still in Massachusetts. I'm in the process of relocating and I'll be down there in about a month. Um, and what's really exciting is that um, this uh, this role is uh, the way that the Democratic Party of Georgia is envisioning it, it. They want this to be permanent. You know, they're they've seen other states across the country that have permanent voter protection directors, and they're so successful because they can they can go from cycle to cycle to cycle, and they can like carry on with the historical and the and, you know the the past knowledge of the prior election, pick up and build on that, those experiences, get the information, and improve and and fix whatever problems might be going along, and you're not just sort of being thrown in at the last minute. <laughs> and it really is, it feels like the last minute um, sometimes, but you're being thrown in at the last minute to try to do really, really hard work in a quick amount of time. And a lot of this work requires relationship building, relationships that take time to, to develop. And so I'm really thrilled to be coming down to Georgia to serve in this permanent context uh, and per serve in this role in that context and on an ongoing uh, basis. So I will be around, so don't you worry, you'll see my face. Um, and, and again, it's just to help provide that that um, historical like build off and, and continue to improve. Uh, so like, I'm not going to get into my bio. Thank you, Leslie, for covering it. Just know that I care very, very much about this work or I wouldn't be uprooting my life and coming down to Georgia, which is definitely going to be one of the most important states in this election, this cycle. In case you haven't noticed that, the president was just in Georgia yesterday kicking off um, the first of many, many rallies in the, what's going to be an intense year. Um, and so I, I know that together we're going to be able to do a lot of great things. 
Um, I'm happy to tell you a little bit about where the program is going right now, the direction that we are heading. Um, a lot of it will sound familiar for you, at least some of the program work, uh, but I'll get into some of the other things that are sort of like deeper and the, the pieces that require the, that more, um, that stronger touch with local election officials, et cetera. And then I'm, I'm happy to open it up for questions. Um, I might not be able to answer everything yet. I am just three weeks in the job. I'm starting my fourth week this week, uh, but um, I will do what I can. But I also would love to get your feedback too at, at the very end um, after I start, after I go through the program and what we're building. Um, I want to know what works great, what works well for you and working with you. Um, I want to know how we, how the experiences from 2022 can be improved upon for this cycle. Um, I, I'm really, I'm really intent on making sure that, that, uh, that our relationship is working very well and that we can work well together and that you can work well and directly with my team too, for whatever reason you can't find me. So just want to make sure that I leave time for that. So let me get into what we're planning for tomorrow, and I can tell you a little bit of what we're planning for May and then a little bit for, for November. These things are still in motion, so things can change uh, over the years. The, the Biden campaign is just uh, really getting their grounding around voter protection right now. They just hired their staff, their permanent staff director for um for the 2024 cycle. So we're gonna get a lot of um, requests from them uh, as they start building up too. So our plans will have to dovetail with their plans as well. That being said, for tomorrow, if you are um, poll working or poll watching, thank you so much. If you are poll watching, you are poll watching with our program. We're standing up a small program in, a, in about 10, 12 counties, and we'll have a, over a hundred poll watchers um, on the ground just to observe and and uh, re return some information back to us. There could be issues with polling locations, that things that we might be able to fix for May. We know May is going to be important for Democrats to number of races on the on the ballot. And so we'll have poll watchers and we're going to have the hotline staffed as well. Hotline is up and running and it's great. And it, we anticipate it's going to be pretty much running from now until the end of the year, uh, till we get through November. And so uh, anything you want to do to to get the word out about about the hotline that it's there, it's a resource for for voters. Please just reach out and let me know. We'll make sure you have all the social media graphics and the um, other ways you can get the 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 word out about the the hotline. We're getting some lawn signs, etc., some placards with the hotline number. All of that advertising information we we are planning to bring back again this year, and hopefully pretty quickly for the May primary. For May, what we are looking to do is we're going to build a little bit of a bigger program, but we're going to add some other post-election pieces uh, to that because there are certain um, facets of, of voter protection that we want to really test out in the spring election and the May election. So that way we know we're good to go and we're ready to go in November. So same again, we'll have poll watchers and we'll have the hotline up and running for, for the May primary. But on top of that, we're actually also going to be uh, making sure, and it'll be in about, I'd say, I think we're looking at two dozen counties. It could be more than two dozen counties for the May primary. Um, so we'll have that focus there. And then on top of that, we are going to be standing up some ballot monitoring. And I think for folks, I think most folks are aware of ballot monitoring that happens uh, essentially the count, like monitoring as the, the ballots are being processed with their, their absentee. And, and then on election day as ballot, ballots are being brought to the central location um, for processing there too. So we will have some volunteers for ballot monitoring um, in May. And then there are two other procedures that you've uh, probably heard about, but maybe you haven't. One is called um, vote review panels. Um, vote review panels, okay, I'm seeing some nods, so folks seem very familiar with that. We are going to make sure we have some, some volunteers. Those are appointed, so just remember that we work with our county parties and, and where there are county parties to make those appointments and ensure that those folks are trained. We do we provide any additional support and assistance to those counties, so that way they are ready and prepared to have their vote review panelists named and working when the time comes in post-election. And then on top of that, we have duplication panels. And I understand this is a newer component um, or a, sort of a newer project program for, for election boards this year. Duplications, uh, duplication panels are, are also appointed by county parties or uh, also if there isn't a county party, the Democratic Party will step in and, and find appointments. 
And um, those duplication panels, what they do is if a, if a ballot is for some reason not able to be scanned in the machine, maybe there's a coffee stain on it, or maybe it's bent or something, or there's some reason why it won't be, it can't go through the regular process for counting. There's a panel of a Democrat and a Republican who were tasked with remaking the ballot, like re remarking the ballot so that way it can be scanned and counted. So we are going to make sure that we have those folks in at least two dozen, um, at least two dozen counties uh, for the May primary. We want to make sure we're testing that out. Uh, we will not be running a cure program in May. We're just not going to start that. We're really going to ramp that up for uh, the over the summer. Um, and it will take a, a good amount of time over the summer though to build the program and make sure we have all of the all of this, the staffing and the technology and the information that we need in order to do that. So, so know that that is going to be a component. And then um, those are the big components that we're looking for in May. So Cure will come on in November. All of that, again, will be there for November as well that I just described. I'm sure we're going to try to get vote review panels and duplication panels in all 159 counties this year, which would be tremendous. Uh, but we want to make sure we have those appointments and we have them there. And, and, um, and then beyond that, we're, we're going to make sure that we are watching this election very, very closely through our election administration efforts. So when I talk about election administration, we stand up a county liaison program. This is really the most like ongoing year round program that we have. We name county liaisons in a number of counties across Georgia. These are our, our eyes and ears on the ground. They're tasked with coordinating and, and communicating with their boards of elections officials, whether they're Democratic board members or maybe they're talking to the elections director in the county. They're really the, the heartbeat of trying to help us know what is going on on the day-to-day -day basis between now and election day in that particular county's board of election. Is there a problem in Cobb County? For example, I'll use this as an example. This literally just happened. Uh, in Cobb County, apparently, uh, the Secretary of State's office sent out um, a polling location notifications to, to voters in a particular couple of particular precincts, and they were wrong. <laughs> the information the Secretary of State's office sent out was wrong. Um, it was incorrect. And so we have a county liaison who we can call, and we can have them communicate with uh, the Cobb County Elections Office to determine what are they doing to remedy or minimize uh, the impact of that incorrect information being sent out. So serve sort of really, really important roles. Um, they attend They attend all of the Board of Election meetings in the counties, but it's ongoing, but it is so critical and it's so important important for us to to have that touch point so that way we can again try to try to avert problems from ever occurring and solve them before they even happen by the time we get to elections and and that we're voting so so those are sort of the the primary components of the program that we plan to launch i'm sure a lot of this sounds familiar to you but of course we want to be organized we want to be thoughtful we want to be communicative um and we you know want to make sure we're doing all the things in the right order but hearing from all the folks on the ground who have to actually do a lot of the work and understand like what makes this program work well, which what doesn't make the program work well. And that's really where we're hoping to get additional feedback from you as well. Um, so those are the major contours of program this year. It's really super high level. I'm happy to get into more of the weeds if you have particularized questions or if there's something I talked about that doesn't sound familiar, just feel free to chime in and uh, let me know. But I will. Um, I will go ahead and stop there and, and wait for questions. And I see there's one actually in the chat right now, and there might be more above, but I'll look at the one that is here by Becky. Um, what do we expect the biggest challenges this year to be? Um, <laughs> I think we are still expecting, um, we're expecting some issues with potential uh, counties not certifying votes, um, which is their which is their obligation to do so. There really isn't any discretion there. And when you look at the statutes about what the duty is of, of those board members when they're certifying elections, uh, we that remains a, a big, big concern for us. And we're also really concerned about the um, voter challenges that we're seeing on mass. Uh, you're probably reading about, and there was a story last week in New York Times as well, about some of the technology platforms that the Republicans are deploying to try to create a record to prove that somebody does not <laughs> is not lawfully registered at the address that they say that they're registered at. A lot of problems with with these apps and those um, and the way that the GOP is deploying and using them. And so we are we are thinking very 
very deeply, actually, we're, we're thinking about a program that we might reach out to you about sooner rather than later, uh, about how we can um, start doing some proactive uh, voter registration outreach, excuse me, particularly for folks who may be, have moved across counties, uh, make sure and uh, doing that voter contact to make sure that they've updated their voter registration before the April deadline for the, the May primary. Uh, things open up uh, again in uh, when I say open up right now, there's no changes being made to uh, uh, voter registrations. We're in that period of time. It's a 60 day period of time bef uh, before uh, before an election where uh, counties are not allowed to make any modifications to to voter registration statuses. Uh, but we'll be back. We'll be beyond that pretty soon, um, right after the May primary. And so we just want to be ready. So those are the, I would say those are sort of the two big things, many, many more, but those are the two big things I'm really worried about right now. Um, let's see. Let's see. What else do we have? Uh, will our office provide a video or something that can be shown at county members to outline the voter protection components for May through November? Yes. Uh, we are planning to actually do a launch for our county parties. Um, and so I don't know if that, I, I don't know, Karen, if your question is particular to County board members, uh, board of elections members. We are thinking about how we thought how we engage them um, as well as how we engage our uh, county party chairs and their county party uh, executive committees members. We want to make sure they're getting all the information about all the voter protection rules that we have available and how they're so critical to it. But if your question is also about board members, we are also thinking about what we can do uh, to support uh, board of election members uh, and um, maybe convening in a, a way that doesn't necessarily like draw public meeting or, or create problems with open meeting laws. Um, so just keep that in mind. It is something that's on the radar. I don't have anything really concrete mapped out yet. Um, but Karen, please chime in if for that reason, for some well, reason. I, I, I was thinking of the information that you're sharing with us that, you know, just generally in terms of the organizational structure, and maybe I know you have to think of all the parameters of security and what you can and cannot share. Um, but, you know, for a lot of county parties, knowing the overall structure of what is going on. Oh, yeah. Might be helpful to... Um, Number one, just educate them. And number two, solicit additional volunteers and support. Because sometimes um, we've gotten, to me, we've gotten assistance for voter protection without really understanding the overall focus. So uh, got it. Going. Got it. That's a great point. Um, I can elaborate a little bit on what how we're envisioning sort of like the staffing structure that I think in part gets to it, but you raise a good point of like what the sort of organizational structure will be. I think that's, they go hand in hand. So um, I have right now, and I think you all have met Liz Barrett. Liz Barrett is our deputy voter protection director for election administration, who's amazing. I'm so excited that she's on the team. She knows so many people and everybody knows to call her. It's fantastic. And so, um, so Liz is going to be overseeing um, the county liaisons and organizing the county liaison program. And that in turn also will be uh, her program, the programs she's going to be recruiting and managing will be that the vote review panel and the um, duplication panels and ensuring that we have appointments to both of those, uh, uh, both of those programs, if you will. Um, then we'll have another deputy voter protection director of programs. That deputy voter protection director is going to manage the hotline and the poll observer programs. Um, so uh, there's a lot of volunteer, heavy volunteer recruitment involved with those programs. And so, and it's, it's like managing chaos too, you have to use technology and van. And so we're really excited to find somebody to, to launch and lead those programs for us as quickly as possible. We're actually hiring um, for that role right now. And then uh, we'll have a director of, of deputy, uh, deputy director for post-election uh, matters, then that deputy will manage and oversee the CURE program ballot monitoring, um, which I know is kind of kind of pre-election, sort of election day, but we're putting it in the, the, the post-election bucket. Uh, we'll have the, the post-election, um, we'll do recount. This person will be in, involved with recount issues as well. Uh, so they'll have a, a pretty heavy plate, when, but we're not going to hire that person out until or later in the spring, early summer. And then I should also say, and I should have said this in my uh, my opening remarks, and I'll go back and I'll look for for questions again in the chat. But um, 
we are about to start like a mad push for volunteer recruitment. So you guys are, are already on top of it, which is great. Uh, but we are going to start doing a, a big effort. It's going to hopefully be very, very visual and very uh, known, known to everybody in Georgia that we are doing this. Um, and uh, with that, we will have our sign-up forms, our volunteer sign-up forms uh, that will help get you sort of into our what we call our volunteer pipeline, um, which will then tell us like, oh, the roles that you're interested in. We can also um, sort of make sure you're getting invited to all the appropriate trainings, et cetera, for, for those roles. Um, and I'm happy to work with, with the leadership with necessary trouble to make sure that we're, we're coordinating the best way to, to sort of get that information around or send information back and forth to each other. Um, so be on the lookout for that soon. Let's see, what else is there? How certain is that there will be a permanent team? It's a great question. Um, obviously everything is like fundraising dependent. So Kevin has made it very, very clear. Kevin, our executive director for the party has made it very clear to me that uh, fundraising for a permanent voter protection program is a very, very top, is a top priority for him and for Georgia. And so there are a few of the roles that will be um, sticking around. So obviously we're building out for a big campaign for 2024. Vast majority of the roles are campaign, they're cycle limited, but there will be a couple that are permanent. Myself, Liz, um, and a few more are, we're envisioning being permanent as well. So um, just know that it's all dependent, you know, anything you wanna do to help us like get the word out to, to folks you know who wanna support uh, programming and, and permanent staff and voter protection, let me know. Let's see. Um, what else do we have here? Any other questions I'm missing here? Am I bringing college students from out of state this time around again? I don't know. It's a great question. What do you think about it? I love your opinion. <laughs> Jennifer, are you still here? Yeah, no, I, I found myself energized by working with them in the last election. Oh, they had a lot more energy than I did. So they, <laughs> they were, and it was great experience for them too. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'd encourage it for sure. Yeah. What, do you remember what kind of work they did? Uh, how did they help you, Jennifer? They, well, they staffed the local democratic office here up in uh, Sandy Springs. Um, okay. It was always covered. Um, they organized the canvassing on uh, the telephone calls. Yeah, I don't know if others found that too, but I, um, uh, Mary Barron was involved with a lot of that. Mary Barron was up in my area. She's, she's, okay. she's been very involved in, as a super volunteer. But yeah, I, I really thought it was great. And I thought also in Carolyn, um, Carolyn's campaign a few years ago, they had tons um, of them. Yeah, okay. so it looks good on their resume too, though. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So Celia, I know Rosaria and some other people, we, we worked a lot with some of the volunteers and some of the paid staff. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's great, at least in DeKalb, I think it's great, but I think the key thing is um, sitting down and working with uh, whatever the county party has already established so we are not repeating and talking to the same people. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly in DeKalb, we have some strong precinct captains and house district people. And, you know, it doesn't make sense to have volunteers come in and focus on areas that are already big turnout areas. We need to really focus on areas where we have very low turnout or no strong leadership. So it's really important to me to be proactive planning instead of reactive. Agreed, agreed. And um, I, I come from an ethos of there, there's there are in many counties, there's a great infrastructure, and we should be building off that and we should be supporting you in that instance, I really see the central office, the, the statewide office, we're here to support you. So whatever gaps or whatever administrative or organizational or operational gaps there are in a county, Folks should be looking to us to help fill that. We're happy to support in that way. I think you're right. We should be engaging in, uh, in conversations with county parties because everyone's different. They're all going to be different. Um, and I have heard that DeKalb is, is definitely a very strong uh, uh, committee there. 
Um, and we should, you know, talk through what's going to work for this cycle. And we should do that sooner rather than later. Um, I think, uh, I, I, like I said, I'm three weeks in, I'm going into week four. Uh, and there's been a candidate qualifying this last week. And so the folks that I work with too at Party Affairs, um, I want to make sure I'm working with the right folks at, at DPG headquarters as well as I'm engaging the counties and we're talking with them about how we want to run program this year. Any other feedback, things that you want to see um, operationalized or things that could have been, that can be approved upon this cycle from last cycle? And I can talk a little more at the end too about uh, build on my ethos and my approach for this cycle, just in general about culture for, for the program too, because that's probably going to be important. So I have one more thing. Before you order any materials, we have a lot of stuff we saved. Oh, great. <laughs> so, you know, rather than spend $5 for a sign, we kind of need to, in my opinion, look at what we already have that you can recycle because that's, um, it, it hurts my heart to throw away things that I think we can use again. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Stocked, yes, stocked away. Okay. Um, uh, Karen, we'll reach out. We'll try to figure out, get a get a handle on, on the things that you have, so that way we're not over <laughs> over oversaturating you with additional information. Um, so thank you. Any other questions? We'll talk a little bit about my ethos here, <laughs> my dream. All right. Uh, so. You know, this program, I'm, this is so different than what I had in Ohio. In Ohio, there was a small network of very committed volunteers and lawyers who cared very much about voter protection. But really, like getting beyond that top tier of volunteers was really hard. And, and here it's so different. There's so many people who are involved day to day. And it's so wonderful. It's so exciting. And so the great news is, is that because you have this engaged network in Georgia, you know, you know the ins and outs of whatever program you've worked on for voter protection, and you know what works, what works well when you're working with voters, and what doesn't work, what doesn't even work when you're working with other volunteers. And so I'm really leaning into the expertise of, of the volunteers, the folks who have been running these programs. I'm really listening to their feedback. Um, had a lot of conversations with Hotline already and just talking with them about how they want to proceed with management of Hotline. And... I don't want to, I don't want to start over. I don't want to like, uh, what is the, there's a good phrase where, you know, you like, I don't, there's no need to like start from scratch. Like you guys have built it out already. It's just, let's refine, let's make it better. Let's see if we can find ways to make it better. You all know that I have multiple masters I report to and who are going to ask me for information and ask me for data. And they're going to tell me to do things that I don't think are going to work well with us. Um, and that volunteers might not like. Every now and then I'm going to have to like do the thing they asked me to do, but I will always advocate and I will always, and I vouch to uh, communicate with you when that happens. The reason why I understand the, that somebody is, is, you know, providing a directive to go in a particular direction. Um, but I think we can work together and I think we can work through all this together. Uh, I want to convince you that, you know, one way that we go about like uh, addressing a program or a problem uh, is the right way. Uh, but, you know, I hope that we can come to consensus. I know we might disagree from time to time. Just know that I will be advocating on your behalf at the same time that um, I'm going to be advocating on behalf of all Georgians and I'm going to be advocating for the Democratic Party of Georgia and for the <laughs> Biden <laughs> president. So there, there, there are a lot of goals that we want to meet here. And so I plan to do it with compassion, with open communication, and with empathy more <laughs> above all else. Like, I, I'm really hoping to build a team that understands the value of respect with for one another and respect for the volunteers that we are working with who committed so many hours to doing this work because they know everything is on the line this year. So um, those are my goals. I just want to make sure that we have people who 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 are kind and love and understand because that is what we are going to need to get through this year. And we're going to need to provide that like in ampleness to each other because we're going to have down days and we need to be there for each other to lift each other up. So that's sort of my my approach. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. That's all I got then. If you guys don't have any other questions or don't want to raise anything, I think I've taken way too much of your time already. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cecilia. It was really generous of you to take your time and help us understand what you'll be doing. So we'll be in touch or you can be in touch. <laughs>
No, thank you all. I really look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Becky. Thank you. And thank you, Cecilia. We are so happy to have you here. You are the bomb and we are 100% behind you and consider um, us your foot soldiers. So I figure this is the beginning of a really long relationship and God, it would be just incredible if it were a kind of a permanent ongoing relationship. Thank you so much. And I am so relieved to see uh, PJ Lemuel here. <laughs> under the moniker of Pauline PJ, welcome home, baby. Um, I think you're muted. Okay, hey, I didn't think this was gonna happen. We made it happen. It's all right, we made it happen. Okay. And I, and I think the next, piece, the next piece is kind of me facilitating the next piece anyway. So shall I just okay, jump good. into it? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Yes, go ahead. Okay, PJ, I also told everybody we were asking for a whole lot of grace because we've had a lot of slips and snags and we're um, just, um, we're all, we're, we are all good. Yes, and thank and, you so much, Becky. And, and just also, I know a couple of folks, um, just let me circle around if anybody is new and has not yet put your name in the chat, please do that. We would love to know your name and email and follow up with you. Um, and let me also just say before we leave the, the area of voter protection, um, lots of gratitude to Leslie High and Pam Wache for, for heading up this team. And um, um, also lots of recognition that Martha Laird is standing behind them as advising and consulting and supporting. And if anybody um, has not yet put your name in the chat and are interested in helping in the voter protection area, please put your name and email in the chat. Um, that would be really, really good. And so we're going to now uh, move on to our next uh, section here. And um, let me also just remind folks that necessary trouble over the course of the last couple of meetings um, decided that we were we were going in full force behind two um, candidates for the House. And one is Susie Greenberg and the other is Jasmine Clark. And in that, uh, in the effort to support them in their races this year, we are doing a lot of organizing um, and we will be doing a whole lot of volunteer work. And um, when we were thinking about who is the best person to talk to us about that kind of volunteer work, the importance of it, the varieties of it, um, why it matters to go canvassing, why it matters to phone bank, why it matters to do any of that, we could think of nobody better to have that conversation with than Jennifer Smith. And Jennifer Smith is a national democratic political consultant. She has worked on a million races. Um, she is the smartest political strategist that I know. And she has been a really good friend to Necessary Trouble. When we were working on Amani Barnes's campaign, Jennifer Smith was her campaign consultant and led us and beat us into submission and taught us so much and whipped us into shape and we learned how to work on a campaign and that was a precious precious learning so um jennifer we are so grateful to be friends with you and thank you um, for teaching us so much and thank you for kind of talking today about whatever you can say to really help us um, inspire our folks to jump in behind these candidates and um, to volunteer so um, grateful to have you here. Let me turn it over to you. That is the single nicest intro I have ever gotten in any group ever, you guys. I should have recorded that and played it for myself when I'm having tough days against Republicans. Thank you so much. That was genuinely incredibly kind. Um, I have the honor of having worked with probably about a dozen of you guys. It is so nice to see some friends. Thank you so much for your work on previous campaigns. I'm known for getting Democratic women elected, and I know a lot of you do the same, so thank you so much. It is super nice to see um, folks that I met on Kelly Callahan's campaign, Imani Barnes' campaign, some of you I know from Becky Evans' campaign. Thank you so much for continuing to be 
in the trenches and doing the yeoman's work of getting these good progressives elected to the state house and the state senate and congress god bless you for what you do um i am a little bit opposite of cecilia cecilia does party infrastructure and coalescing and i am a little bit um like uh the huns i'm a hired gun i work for uh whoever i want to so i tend to be literally the tip of the literal spear right if they're coming for you in your village i tend to be the group that teaches people how to fight and meets them on the road right if you want to go take a city i'm the person who tends to teach you how to use the catapults right um for those of you that i haven't met before my name is jennifer smith i'm a national democratic political consultant i'm a former newspaper writer if you ever wonder how folks get into this business uh, i was a political reporter reporter for the ajc the atlanta press creative loafing southern voice uh, and all of the super religious, ironically, newspapers, uh, neighborhood newspapers in Atlanta before I got into campaigns. I did Shirley Franklin's campaign um, as the deputy research director in 2001, and I wasn't planning on that becoming my full-time career, but it did, and here we are 23 years later. I've done 800 races. I have an 84% win rate, and I'm incredibly aware at this point in my life that the most satisfaction comes from getting progressive women elected to office. And with folks like Becky and Pam and Karen, we will continue to do that in Georgia. And thank you so much for all of your help. I know you guys specialize in a lot of things, but some of those things are door knocking, phone calls, and postcards. And I've had some really satisfying conversations with Robin Shahar the last couple of weeks on the statistics on those things. And she wasn't 100% sure that you guys knew the statistics, right? Like maybe you know the adjectives and you don't know the nouns, right? So we wanted to talk about those with your permission, if that's okay, Becky. Okay, sweet. So um, a lot of you know that big campaigns pour millions and millions and millions of dollars into TV, radio, and direct mail. And those things are fantastic, but they move the bar a certain number of points at the ballot box. A mail piece will move the number at the ballot box two points. Four rounds of field or phone calls will do the same thing for free. So there's a reason that every single campaign since the beginning of time has had a major field component. Every single Democrat Democratic campaign ever has done it. And the Republicans have caught up with us in doing it because they've caught on, right? The Trump campaign knocked on a million doors in Florida last cycle. They're expected to do twice that this time. It's incredibly important that we keep doing what has gotten Democrats elected, which are postcards, phone calls and door knocking. Field is the single most memorable face of any campaign. It is more memorable than TV. It is more memorable than direct mail. It is more memorable than digital or radio or anything else. While it may not move the needle as much as millions of dollars poured into TV, it is the thing that voters remember. Nothing beats the energy exchange of a eyeball to eyeball conversation on how we decrease inflation, how we increase affordable housing, and how we, you know, work on gun violence in our communities, like door to door and phone calls. For those of you who have never looked at the statistics on door knocking, four rounds of door knocking will equal a point at the ballot box. That's really hard to do in a statewide campaign. It's incredibly easy to do in a local city council race. It is incredibly easy to win a local city council race by just starting field early and doing field. You don't have to outraise anybody. You can just out knock them. And that's how we win more than 70% of the women that we get elected to office. They do so through field. It's nice to run for Congress and have those big pieces of artillery. It's better to get elected. And you get elected by doing field. So if you've never thought about it in terms of it's the thing that started campaigns, it's the thing that every campaign has, it's the most memorable component of field or of the campaign, 
that's super important. What you guys do are essential in getting folks elected. And I don't wanna bore you with a bunch of adjectives that you already know or with numbers that aren't applicable to what you're doing. But if you guys have specific questions on what impacts voters more or how to do that you know, better or how to get more satisfaction out of doing it, I would love to open this up to Q&A so that we're actually making sure to address what you guys have in front of you, if that works for you, Becky. Anybody have any questions on postcards, phone calls, door knocking, walk cards, rack cards, door hangers? Um, Jennifer, what, what are your tips for an effective postcard? That is a fantastic question, Bam. And it's so nice to see you. Uh, nice. So in, in, I took way too many years of how to persuade voters in college. So in my experience in the uh, classroom and then on campaigns, there's two main goals for a postcard. The first one is to convince people that the postcard is interesting and about them. And ironically, we have found that you do that by making it less political and more personal. If you do focus groups on what makes people turn over a postcard, they're more likely to turn over a postcard, i.e. seek more information with a picture of the candidate out camping with their kid than they are a picture of the candidate in front of a flag, right? We are statistically the 10%, the people that are very, very interested in campaigns. 90% of folks will tell you they're not particularly interested. And that varies from, you know, apathy to hate, right? But <clears throat> if you make it personal and less political, you're more likely to get folks to turn the postcard over. If they turn the postcard over, then you have 30 seconds, right? Karen will tell you it is a very, very small window of time where you have their attention. And your job is two things make them know the candidate's name and give them something to remember that they like about the candidate. Is it important that the voter know your 27 point plan to make our schools better? Not really. It's incredibly important that they remember that you are interested in making our schools better and that you have kids in the school or the candidate has kids in the school, meet Sailor. Uh, <clears throat> but the name ID is the number one thing and then giving them a reason to like you. So it could be that you make really moist mac and cheese, right? No shade to the former mayor, right? It could be that you have four adopted dogs that people love, right? Anything that makes people like the candidate makes an effective postcard. You're not gonna get people to um, sort of absorb an entire platform, but if they will walk away going, I know exactly who Karen McCallum is, and I know that I like her, then you've done your job with a postcard. From the same perspective, Jennifer, how about phone calls? Phone calls are super fantastic. I, I, I frequently have the hot take on these calls um, because phone calls are slightly more persuasive than door knocking. And that's because folks have less of a wall that goes up when you unsolicitedly knock on their door versus unsolicitedly call them. They're just slightly less defensive when you call them. So not only are they slightly more persuasive, you can do more per hour. I can sit my ample behind in a chair and make 30 phone calls per hour. I cannot hike my ample behind up the hills of Roswell and knock on 30 doors in an hour, right? So they're more effective and they're faster. So I tend to really, really push them, but that does not make me the popular person on the campaign. Folks really love door knocking. They love getting their steps in. They love getting that vitamin D in. I totally understand. The numbers indicate that we should push phone calls when we can. But what should be a framework of an effective phone call? Uh, an effective phone call, for anybody who's done it, you guys know that the vast majority of the time you're leaving messages, right? So first of all, don't be afraid to leave the message when you don't get somebody. The second thing is it's incredibly important that you make it obvious that it's a human and not a robot calling. Folks really like getting phone calls from humans because they think it means they're important and they are, right? The third thing is saying the candidate's name at least twice. 
right? What we discovered after the personhood initiative in Mississippi in 2010 is the single most important thing for folks to know that impacts GOTV is the knowledge that somebody is watching the turnout. If you want the single best hack I've learned in 22 years on the phones to get folks to come out, it's to tell them, I'm looking at your voter record. I'm going to call you after the election and ask you how your voting experience was. Has nothing to do with the candidate, but people freak out when they think there's going to be a test, right? We all flash back to high school and college and go, oh my gosh, there's going to be a test, right? Just tell them you're going to call them back and ask them about voting. A hundred percent of the time they get out and vote. It's crazy, you guys. Single best election hack I've ever learned. So I would say, call them, be real, don't be afraid of making mistakes, use the candidate's name a couple of times, and at least imply that you're gonna call them back. We call it the uh, letter of shame or the message of shame because you're shaming them into getting out and voting. I'm not proud of it, but I respect the hell out of the results. Which part of that, Jennifer, would you leave in the message? If you left a message, I, I would leave all of it, Pat, because oh. it's bossy that way. Mm -hmm. Hi, Pat. This is Jennifer. I'm calling because I'm a volunteer for Becky Butler for city council, and we see that you're a regular voter. Thank you so much for voting. Um, we will be calling after the election to see how your election uh, experience was. We hope that you'll vote for Becky. Call me at this number if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get all of that out, that's okay. I do this full time all the time. So, you know, I remember the points. If you only remember one or two of those, you're still moving the needle. Yeah. So few people will answer the phones anymore. That's right. They and don't so, know your number. They're not answering. Right. And we're told over and over by candidates that it's no, no, don't leave a message. Just I think that. But but we really do want to leave the message. We think that's your only chance of getting through the people, isn't it? That's right. Okay. We love candidates. They're fantastic. They're wrong on that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Jennifer, can you address um, the, sa the safety issue um, of canvassing? Because that's the last couple of years. I mean, we have never used to think about it too much. But, you know, I think going in pairs is one solution. What do you, what do you think about I going out there? I agree with you. And thank okay. you so much for bringing that up. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Did anybody work on the Jim Martin for U.S. Senate campaign in 2008? Does anybody remember that a field person for the Jim Martin campaign got shot while knocking on doors for Jim Martin? The threat is real. Hopefully it never happens to anybody here. Hopefully nothing bad ever happens to anybody here. But as a, field, as a former field director and as somebody who implements field on most campaigns that I work on, if not all, keeping your folks safe should be your number one concern. It should be mandatory that folks go out in pairs, that they only go out with minivan where you know they are, and that they only do it during daylight hours. Those are the three things we normally do. And, and look, I've had, I do a lot of Chicago races, right? So it's scarier in Chicago to do field than it is in Atlanta. We have a program called Life 360, which just tracks people on a, on a screen, right? It's very big brother, but we have folks log in on Life 360 when we're working in, you know, rougher areas if we're worried about their safety so that we can literally track them block to block. It just gives the field director and the candidate a little more peace of mind. It certainly doesn't prevent anything bad from happening, but folks tend to feel better if they know somebody who knows where they are, if they're a first time canvasser. So you have programs out there that can give additional peace of mind if you find that you need it, might be helpful. I think a good way to do that is, um, you know, and not reduce your effectiveness by 50% is just go out in pairs, but have one person take the even side and one person take the odd side. Then you're always with an eyesight of each other. Absolutely. That's yeah. 
coming from somebody who has done a lot of field, Pam is 100% correct. Yeah. Keep your buddy in sight. Jennifer, I want to say that 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 um, Elizabeth Cohen asked, can we have crib sheets, ba crib sheets based on your points for phone calls? And I'm going to assure folks that we can, and Absolutely. that we will. And and I'm also aware that um, that I see a whole bunch of folks in our team leads taking notes as you talk, and that I'm watching Gareth Finley, one of the candidates running, who was ta also we taking love notes. Gareth, thank you for running, <laughs> Gareth. I I have been a fan Fun of voice alumna. Um, with your permission, Becky, um, I'm a big fan of when volunteers and county folks call me with questions. I took eight years of college classes that I paid for. Please let me give you some of the things that I pay, you know, $170,000 for for free. Um, with your permission, Becky, my cell phone number is 404-454-5555. I fully understand that I'm an arrogant fat cat who thinks I know everything. But if you have a question about the statistics on field, how to design a postcard, how to keep your volunteers safe, whatever it is, please feel free to call me anytime. I don't take calls on Sunday because I'm trying to control my blood pressure, right? But anytime you want to call or text me, I love making you guys more productive. If you're going to put the work in, let's make you super effective. Also, so Jennifer, we're thanks. Be Becky, we're recording this and we'll have That's the right. recording on YouTube by the weekend. We're I also going to have a transcript of it, a transcript <laughs> and best quotations from Jennifer Smith will be pulled from the transcript. <laughs> so I'm voting. I'm voting Gareth Finley. It Yes, and the, and the sec and and also you don't have to outraise them; you just have to out knock them. Jennifer, right. thank you, thank you beyond thank all measure everybody. for this thank relationship. For we do. treasure you and treasure it. Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye, Jennifer. Bye, Jennifer. And and that is a tremendous um, introduction and launch for uh, what we are really focused on doing in the next however many minutes, which is we are focused on recruiting volunteers in each of these candidates from you guys. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna hear about, we're gonna hear just a couple of minutes about each of these troubler efforts, the canvassing, the phone banking, um, the postcards, the signs, um, and um, and then we're going to really ask you to to listen for where you want to plug in to put your name in the chat right put your name in the chat, whether it's canvassing or phone banking or postcards. Um, or helping with signs or helping with fundraising um, so please, as you listen to these to these to our troubler team leads in each of these areas, um, please listen within mind. Which of these things do you want to volunteer for? This is the this is this is the year, right? This is the year. This is the moment. This is actually the meeting where we start building these teams. Um, so we are going to start by hearing from Amy Carpenter, who is our team lead on um, phone banking. Amy, would you talk to us about what that's going to look like? Yes, and I'm so glad to have heard from Jennifer because she's given her blessing on what we have already been doing. <clears throat> phone banking, everybody's favorite, is easy, efficient, and, you know, a very effective way of reaching voters. And again, I'm so glad to get that confirmation from Jennifer. And yes, we, we all know that if, if you've done phone banking in the past, you only reach a human being about one, one human being per 12 calls dialed. But our intent, and we did this the last um, effort that we helped out on, we only... Um, we leave messages, we leave voice messages, and then we can also back up with a text immediately while we are looking at that telephone number on our phone or computer. So everyone's being contacted if they, if either with a personal conversation, which is rare, but, and I will admit that, but they also get the, the voicemail, the voice message and the text. And every once in a while, you will get a priceless interaction. My favorite was a, several years ago, and a woman answered the phone, and she said, we have just voted. We've just voted, and my 18-year-old son, who's right here, voted for the first time. 
and would you please speak to him? And I thought, oh, of course. So she puts this young man on the phone and he was so proud of himself. And I had the chance to thank him profusely and encourage him, you know, just to never forget that first feeling, that first vote, that every vote counts, that he was a part. I mean, that, so it's all worth it. So that the deal is sign up for phone banking and see how many of these experiences you can log in. And let us know in the chat. Thank you, Amy. And so if you are willing to do any phone banking, and these would be from home. There we go. Jennifer Conweiler is doing it. And Anne-Marie Schwarzkopf, so glad to have you back and on the phone banking team. Bravissimo. Um, anybody else who is open to helping with phone banking, Amy Carpenter has been a tremendous phone banking lead and manager and supports. And this is something you can do from home. You don't have Michelle Casper. Thank you so very much. And Laura, muchísimas gracias. And thank you, you can be anonymous too. If you have any concerns about your phone number being out there, we'll work with you on um, being anonymous. Excellent. And Robert Hahn, Michelle Truxillo, blessings, blessings, blessings on all of you willing to do that. And we start to build that phone banking team now, and that will be continuing. Oh, Nicoletta and Marsha Viola, bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you. This is really a tremendous, tremendous team. Um, and Amy, thank you for your leadership. Kate King, would you talk to us about postcards? I would. And um, you heard Jennifer talk about how effective postcards were. You might also have seen that James Carville recently said, I think it's one of the most effective things people can do to save this country. So I don't know if he is basing that on anything or just his gut, but still. Um, and another thing about postcarding, if you are an introvert like me and can't stand the idea of knocking on somebody's door, can't stand the idea of picking up your phone and calling a stranger, you can talk to people with postcards. Um, so we're in, I think we're going to have postcards available to write as soon as next weekend. Just stay tuned uh, for Susie Greenberg. Um, and we, there's two ways that we're doing postcards. One is the way we've done it for years, which is um, bundles, little packets of postcards, probably 20 per bundle, will be in a cooler at Becky and Pat's house. You come pick them up. You provide the stamps. That's an important point. Um, so if you're going to do this model, order some postcard stamps either online or most post offices have them. Um, so you write your postcards. Generally, you mail them. In a few cases, we'll have you bring them back so we can mail them from a particular postmark. The other way that we just started more recently that is probably more fun is postcard parties where a bunch of us get together at somebody's house and write postcards together, chit chat while we're writing, try to pay attention so you don't write on the postcard what you were saying to your neighbor. Um, and if you're interested in hosting a postcard party, I will put my email in chat and please email me and we can sort of talk about when would be, you know, the, the details and when would be a good idea. If you just want to write postcards, put your contact info in the chat and I will add you to my list. And as I say, we could be starting as soon as next weekend writing them. And, um, you know, we're going to have thousands to write over the course of this cycle and we're going to make it fun. Beautiful. Kate King, thank you so much. Kate has been so organized, so supportive, such an incredible lead in this category. So much gratitude to Kate King. And thank you to all the folks who are signing up. And I'm just kind of watching them in the chat. And um, uh, we're getting a whole bunch of Susan Ayers and Raynell and Anne Marie and Mimi and, Rain and Jane Hudson and Steve and Beth. Rosea, Leslie, Jan, and Larry, blessings on you. I'm not what um, the so Joyce. The, these are all things that we are going to be doing for our two troubler candidates, um, Jasmine Clark, Susie Greenberg. We are going to be doing all these things that we're describing. We're going to ooh, look at that. Did you just see those balloons? I'm going to do that again. We're going to be doing it for all of our troubler candidates, um, and so. Um, that's and and with the assumption that if we can get somebody in there to vote for Jasmine or Susie, they will also vote for Joe Biden. Um, uh, so there we go. 
And thank you again for those who are going to be doing postcards, especially for those who are signing up to host postcard parties. A reminder to put your name in the chat if you're willing to postcard. Contact Kate King if you're willing if you're willing to have a party. Uh, and once again, um, if anybody is new is just jumped on, and if you're new to necessary trouble, please put your name in the chat and your email address, and we will follow up on you. Um, okay, Lou Boos, would you talk a little bit about signs and sign placements and what kind of help you'll be needing? Certainly. Thank you, Becky. And it's uh, good to see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of people that I've worked with over the last few campaigns uh, since we've been involved with the Troublers. Uh, the candidates usually like signs and they get very competitive because they want to see more of their signs and their, comp their competition. However, there's a there's a budget they have to uh, go with, and uh, so depending on our, our two candidates, we'll be working with uh, the number of signs they have. But however, the way we like to to work is uh, I like to see the 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 door knockers when they go out, and uh, we many times we'll have a group that meet in a particular location. Uh, like to see that they have signs, so that when they find a, a very good location and a and a willing uh, a, a person uh, to put a sign in their yard. That's that's really one of the best ways. Uh, in the the second uh, area is, or let me comment a little bit. Most of the uh, most of the communities, uh, the, uh, the the cities and uh, the county, especially some of the cities, Tucker. It's impossible to put a sign out in a on a public corner without it being taken down within less than 24 hours by the sign police, I like to call them. Uh, so the, the key thing that I have found very successful are the convenience stores, the little, uh, the family owned convenience stores, gas stations. Most of them are run by people who are immigrants that have come here. And I think we've had basically 99.9% .9 success when you find a particular uh, corner, a particular location that will get a lot of traffic and you go and say, we got this campaign coming up, you know about the election, and may we put this sign in your uh, out in your yard on your your property. And that, that's been very successful. Uh, so what I will be coordinating with everyone is to work and get the signs from the uh, from the candidates, organize that part of it. Uh, we get them to the people who are, are going to be going out. Uh, a number of you people that have on here now have helped me uh, very much with uh, signs at convenience stores and this sort of thing. And it's it's a matter of uh, the location and so forth. But we've got some very good ideas since we've worked in most of these communities over the last few campaigns. So uh, would you please put your names in the uh, in the uh, chat for uh, for us to see. And uh, the signs usually that'll be later into the campaign as the campaign gets going. Uh, and uh, w we get them and we will get them out to the, the people who are gonna be knocking on doors and the people that would be willing to put them at like the convenience stores. Also, before the, uh, before the election days, we usually try to put uh, signs at the, at the election locations. And that's a very, you know, that couple of days before, a day before we go out and we put like four signs around a location where they people drive and where they drive away. There's more leniency about doing that. You have to keep it 150 feet away from the campaign, but that's that's easy to take care of. So uh, it's a it's a good way to get out. You drive around, you find uh, interesting parts of the of the of the uh, of the cities and towns you've never knew existed, and a little bit of walking, uh, fresh air, and it works in it. You're, uh, the campaign people, the, the the candidates really like to have that. So uh, with that, uh, please put your names in and uh, and uh, uh, I'm available to be contacted, anyone that has any questions or if you have any questions right now. Thank you, Lou. Lou has been an amazing, an amazing team lead in um, sign placement. And if anybody has, for those who have worked with Lou before, um, he's a pure delight to work with both directly riding in his car and getting out and putting signs out or he can um, help you know where where signs need to go. Carolyn Gorman, thank you so much for being willing to help with signs. 
um, and also sign play, oh, sign play placement, Steve and Beth, Michelle Casper, um, Jennifer, thank you very, very, very much for being willing to help with signs. Um, we greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, and then I'm going to pull up the screens, um, the PowerPoint for the for Tara Doyle, who is going to be talking to us about the plan for canvassing. Tara. Great. Can you hear me, everybody? Yeah, wonderful. So um, I, I agree with what Jennifer said, that this is an incredibly effective way to get out the vote. And doing it with a buddy is not only safer, but also a whole lot more fun. Um, Brown and I will be working for Jasmine's campaign, doing canvassing, and Pam Woodley will be overseeing Susie's. Um, and we're really uh, hoping to get people who would be willing to do both, right? But as you can see here, we're going to canvas every other Saturday from May, probably late May, uh, through October. And um, that will be 12 canvassing days, approximately six for each candidate. And we're going to be our own group. And we learned more than you could ever imagine from the great canvassing maven, um, Karen McCowan, who really is my mentor um, in this. And Pam Woodley's real good too. Um, but she's shaping her head like she's also a mentee of Karen. Um, but we have discovered that if we get started early and we continue through this period, that uh, it's very effective. And we've done that for um, Kelly Kaufman and for Amani Barnes and for Jasmine and for other, other candidates as well. We will be our own group, which I think is the most effective way to do this uh, because we'll be trained, we'll be a well-oiled machine and we'll go out and we'll do it. Um, we will, however, include other friends. Um, and one, uh, one possibility is with the Jewish Democratic women. They may join us. It sounds like they will. Um, next slide, please, Becky. Um, we will be responsible for getting the TERFs from the campaign and assigning those to our teams, to our troubler teams. We will make sure that people understand minivan and Karen, bless her, has, uh, Karen McGowan has offered to train people in minivan. Um, we will put together literature packets. And I think that'll be a team of us, Pam and Brown and me and Karen. Um, and we will set the meeting times and places. And so the team captains, which is Pam Woodley and me and Brown, um, Pam, you're working with someone else too, maybe Naomi, is that right? Yeah, okay. Um, so we will be in close touch with the teams uh, several times before you go out uh, to be sure you know where we are and what we're doing and et cetera. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the campaigns will be responsible for canvassing strategy uh, which they'll do with the team, the Troublers team leaders. They'll be in touch with us about that. They will also cut the turfs and send us the maps, which we will be providing to our Troublers teams. Uh, they will give us the messaging that we will, when we knock on a door, what we will say. And they will help us with, uh, they will actually do the, the follow-up with voters. Um, one thing I would say when I was listening to Lou is that we often give canvassers signs um, because a really great place to put a sign is with someone whose door you've knocked on and you would say when they're excited about Jasmine or Susie, would you be willing to have a sign in your yard? And that means that sign doesn't get taken down, right? It's in a good place, it's in a neighborhood, 
with enthusiastic people. And so that will be another thing that we will be responsible for in working with Lou is getting signs and then passing them out when we meet with troublers. So I think, Pam, how, how have I forgotten anything important? I just want to encourage anyone. I know I never thought I would be able to knock doors. I mm -hmm. thought that would be an awful thing to do, but I really have grown to enjoy it. We are knocking only on Democrats' doors. There's an occasional mistake, but in general, yep. um, everybody's kind and happy to see you if they do answer the door. Um, so, and it, I have learned so much about the city just being out in these neighborhoods. Yeah. So I've, I found it really great. And I would like to encourage everyone to just try it if you think it would be awful. <laughs> I've actually really loved it too. I am I am a natural born extrovert, so it, it it's good for us. But if you have a partner who's an extrovert, we'll try to match you up. Um, but really, it's so heartening to actually meet voters, you know, and often, as Pam said, they may have received a phone call already or gotten a postcard or even know the candidates sometimes or voted for them in the past, such as with Jasmine. So it's a direct personal contact with voters, which I have really loved. So um, I encourage you to sign up. Yes, indeed, I do. Tara, if I may make a quick comment, uh, one of the things I also found that you may find that a, a voter that comes to the door has a question or a problem. And I've actually had to call the, the helpline I could give them the number, call helpline and get their answer for them. Or of course, leave the little card we usually have and yep. have them do that. So uh, yep. that's a that's a very vital thing. I, I, I can't stress how that was to get to solve their problem. And of course, we have the same experience that the phone bankers do that we often knock on many doors without meeting a single soul. But we leave that literature and that almost in, always includes um, helpline um, information. And I know that that has been helpful for people as well. And Tara and, and Pam, another thing I'd like to, to mention about canvassing is, I mean, yes, you're out there for the candidate and you're out there for, for another purpose, but you get to see who lives in your own city. Yeah. I mean, you will go to neighborhoods that, you know, you might never go to otherwise, and you get to, you, you know, you see who lives there. It's, it's really, it's fascinating for that reason. Yes. Becky, can I ask a question? Are you, <laughs> Becky, are you going to have, uh, are we going to have those little cards that has the information of where, the, where you can get your voter information and so forth? I find myself in a grocery store. So I start talking to this young person at the cashier. They say, oh, I don't know what to do. And if you had that little card, you hand, hand it to them. So if each of us had a, a, a few yes. of those cards when we're in the general yes. community, at the office, wherever, at church, yes. uh, you know, hand them out when people have questions. Yes, we will definitely have, have those. And um, um, I'm, a, I'm aware we're going to need to start, uh, Gail, Gail, do you have a question? Do you want to unmute yourself for a question? Yeah, very quickly. Um, I've started working on the voter protection hotline again now. And as Jennifer mentioned, they're part of, uh, an important piece is to let people know again that the, uh, that the hotline is up and running and is an active resource. And Lou had a very good, uh, he calls the hotline himself to answer questions and maybe on that card be able to hand to people that has the voter protection hotline number on it to get get the word out about the hotline beautiful and it looks like we have a whole a number of folks who are signing up for do door knocking and canvassing let me also say this is again a really really powerful team set of team leads with um pam woodley and naomi 
Bach working together and with Tara and Robert Brown working together and Karen McCowan with tech and infrastructure support in the back. We will not waste your time and they will support you and teach you and pair you with experienced folks if you need some and need some additional help. And so you cannot you cannot do anything. There's nothing nothing more valuable than 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 this. So jump in if you at all can and great gratitude to those folks who are the team leads. Um, there is a not, one other thing that we will be doing for candidates, and that is that Necessary Trouble will be having a fundraiser jointly, a virtual fundraiser jointly for Jasmine and for Susie. Um, um, Aquaria and I are, um, Aquaria has offered to help me move that forward, and we would love some additional support. A few of you have worked on these before. They are deeply rewarding. Um, again, they will be virtual. This will be virtual. If you are at all willing to help plan a, um, a virtual fundraiser for our candidates, please put your name in the chat and some of you who have done this before or if you haven't done it before it's mostly really just kind of figuring out the logistics of how to do it we just need a little bit of backup for this so um, if you're willing to help with putting together a joint fundraiser for our candidates um, please put your name in the chat and we will follow up with you um, and there's one other thing before we leave this whole area um, that i want to make a pitch for and um, that is that what are you going to be wearing when you do all of this work for candidates? Necessary trouble swag. Um, and we have new t-shirts. Um, last we had were the Stacey Abrams Necessary Trouble t-shirts. These are new Necessary Trouble logo t-shirts. Um, black crew, blue crew, and black v-neck. Um, we are putting in our first order in one week, and so we do not know if we will be putting in a second order. So if you want a Necessary Trouble t-shirt, you're going to need to put in your order and you want to make sure that we have them in your size and style. You got to do it in the next few days. Um, I want to be do a big shout out to Joyce Thomas who is um, kind of the point person for this and the rest of our Necessary Trouble t-shirt team. Um, I will be putting the jot form link in the chat. Um, Lou, we probably won't be having lawn sleeves shirts this time round, but we will have the blue crew, the black crew, and the black v-neck. I'm about to put the jot form uh, link in there and um, and and please do it if, you're, if you want a t-shirt please do it in the next um, several days because people get really upset because then they want one and we don't have one and we are not 100% sure because there are minimums in the orders that we will be doing another order. I will put this in the chat and I am going to be great gratitude to all the leads and um, uh, I'm going to turn this over now to Karen Davenport for the next piece of the um, meeting. Thank you, Becky. I'm excited to tell you guys that we have two troublers who are running for office in May and November in the May and November elections this year. And um, one is uh, Dominique Cooper, and she is running as a candidate for the school board district three uh, Gwinnett County election. And we all know how important it is to have someone like Dominique on the school board who is compassionate and a dedicated community leader who deeply understands the needs of uh, Gwinnett County Public Schools. She is um, has a lot of experience with the Social Security Administration. Um, she has volunteered in the schools as a PTA member, a PTA leader for 16 years. And of course, you know, that involves being a room representative as well as a school room representative. So she has some clear understanding of what's going on in the schools. And she has a deep passion to work with the parents and the children and the youth to help um, framework what's happening in Gwinnett County Schools. She has a Master's of Science in Human Services, uh, School and Community Services, and Education Certificate from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I thought I saw Dominique on the line. Hi, I'm here. Okay, hey, Dominique. So um, I wanted to give her just a few minutes to tell us. She's so excited about running. And so if you want to share with us a little bit, Dominique. 
Good afternoon and happy Sunday, Troublers. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you for the warm introduction. I am Dominique Cooper. I am a candidate for Gwinnett County Public Schools, District 3, Board of Education. And I am very, very grateful to be a part of the race. I have been in Gwinnett County for 12 years, been very active with our schools. I'm a mom of five boys. I've got the youngest is nine, the oldest is 19. I have two of them that have already graduated from Gwinnett County Public Schools and are in college. And I am just very vested into our community and our schools. I'm looking to bring my level of community connection to Gwinnett County Public Schools Board of Education to be able to connect the dots between our businesses, our stakeholders, our parents, our families, our students, our staff, all of it, I find that we are all in this thing together for the, the primary purpose of making sure that we educate almost 183,000 students in Gwinnett County. And I'm here to be a leader and to make sure that we have proper representation on the board, um, people that are you know, there for our kids and for our staff and people that can have a level of integrity as well as advocacy to make sure that we're doing the right thing to move our school system forward and to keep things um, in the excellent condition in the way they've been here in Gwinnett. So thank you so much just for your time. Um, I don't know how much time I have to talk, but my husband would say I could talk all day about school and education in Gwinnett County. So I don't, I don't want to over talk or overstep, but that's a little bit about me and um, why I am running for the school board here in Gwinnett. Great, great, Dominique. We are going to have a brief question and answer period after our other person who's running for office shares some information. Um, so Gareth is also running for a position. Uh, she's going to be running as a, a candidate for the Georgia Senate District 46. Gareth, do you want to share a little bit about how you're excited to lend your service in this way? Yes, thank you, everyone. I'm so excited to hear from Dominique. And probably the most important thing to do, this is the meeting Sign up to help Susie Greenberg and Jasmine Clark because the Necessary Trouble team is the most incredible powerhouse to get engaged as a volunteer. And they select candidates that with a volunteer field team can win. With your support, signing up today, these two candidates will win. And I got to tell you, my district is gerrymandered. I happen to live in a red county in a red district that's been gerrymandered to disenfranchise thousands of Democrats. Um, I live in Georgia State Senate District 46. Um, I'm unopposed in the Democratic primary. So I'm going to be going head to head in November with a man named Bill Cowsert. He is Brian Kemp's brother-in-law. And they are carbon copies when it comes to their political views. Um, my district goes from Decula in Gwinnett County into a little bit of Barrow County, most of Walton County, where I live, all of Oconee County, and then over into Athens Clark. And I've selected this district to run for. This is my very first run for public office. I've selected this to be my first race. It will not be my last. Next time I will either run for re-election or I will run for another race that I'm more likely to win. But my idea is to boost democracy. I'm running here to give voters a choice. I'm running here to boost democracy and I am running for tomorrow. I don't wanna make things like they were yesterday all over again. I want to be bringing people together into the future. And my district happens to include the place where Lake and Riley was murdered less than three weeks ago. Um, she's the university student whose name and image have been co-opted by the Donald Trump campaign. In Rome yesterday, Donald Trump did a big rally where there were people holding posters with this woman's name and image 
she was an innocent victim of a terrible murder. And because it so happened that the suspect who was arrested is an asylum seeker from Venezuela, the Republicans have turned her into a rallying cry. It is so shameful what they have done. And um, my opponent, Bill Cassert, has gone in media appearances, including Fox News, to demand drastic measures against immigrants because of the murder of this victim, Lake and Riley. So yes, I say her name, but not to corrupt and shame uh, and showboat and scapegoat immigrants over one crime that one man was responsible for. Um, so in this critical election year, we all need to be all hands on with democracy. And Becky has encouraged me to say why it's so important for Democrats to run in deep red districts. This district isn't really red, it's purple. There are tens of thousands of Democrats in the district, but the legislature has gerrymandered it and drawn it so that the people who are progressive and liberal like ourselves, who tend to vote for the Democratic Party, they're locked out of getting a win because of the way the district has been drawn. And I think that's a shame, but reason why I'm running is to boost up democracy and to increase turnout. Statistics have shown that when people have a choice, they're more likely to vote. Mm -hmm. If people have a ballot where all the candidates are just running unopposed, there's less likely to feel that there's any meaning in their vote. So a contested race lifts the, the, the turnout for the election. And we know, again, by statistics, that when the turnout lifts, Democrats tend to benefit because people who are struggling to make ends meet tend to vote for the Democratic Party. And when they have a real sense of participating and a chance to win, they're more likely to turn out and vote. And um, I've gotten way off my little script here. I'm just speaking <laughs> ad hoc, so I may not make every point that I planned. But in terms of what um, what I am bringing to the race, um, I was asked to say, what, what skills do I bring to the race? I have a very fund of political knowledge and skills. I've been a super volunteer and sometimes on political staff for 40 years. I've been immersed in politics since the 1970s, immersed in Georgia politics since uh, 1989 when I moved here. I'm a social worker, entrepreneur, and frequent volunteer. And um, I chose this race to have the greatest number of people have an option on the ballot, not because I'm likely to win. So I do need your support. I will be attacked. Not only am I standing up for the right side of history on a matter as sensitive as the murder of Lake and Riley, but I'm also gay and I have bipolar disorder, which I've successfully recovered with. But um, there are a number of reasons why the uh, Republicans will be glad to trounce my name. So I need your support, your encouragement. I need you to be part of this team. I need you to be feeling satisfied that you're doing something for democracy. That means volunteering for Susie Greenberg and for Jasmine Clark. And of course, um, for all the great candidates that are on the Democratic slate. And um, I really encourage you to stick with Necessary Trouble because it is a winning team. And of course, if you would like to donate for my campaign, I could use the funds, definitely. My um, website is in the chat, it's garethfenley.com. You do have to spell it correctly, <laughs> F-E-N-L-E-Y. And um, I could use a volunteer or two to help me out, but um, I don't right now have a massive field campaign. I could use somebody who wants to be sort of a virtual assistant to help organize me. So a couple of volunteers would not be refused. I would love to have a volunteer or two, but really I hope all of the 57 people who are on this call right now will sign up. I hope you will each sign up. 
Will I have postcards? Well, if you donate me some money, I'll have money for postcards. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Here, thank you so much. And thank you so much for taking on the charge of um, working to help save our democracy and using your background as a social worker and a, an entrepreneur and a community volunteer. And you're going to help move Walton County forward in the right direction. Um, let me remind you that, um, you know, Necessary Trouble as an organization, we only have a sufficient bandwidth to really support two Georgia House candidate members, and we have selected those. But, you know, we as as you, as, as as Gareth outlined, and as you know, we hear often, we're very good at multitasking, and we're very good at you know sort of focusing for so many minutes on this project and so many minutes on the next project. So, any time, money, or effort that people individually would like to contribute to the work that Dominique is going to be putting forth running for school board district three and that Gareth is going to be working towards in terms of the Georgia Senate district 46 would be greatly, greatly appreciated. I'm not sure if there's some questions, but Aquarius is going to handle any questions that people may have for Dominique or Gareth. Thank you, Karen. I think there are a couple of questions that have come through. Gareth has um, answered those questions that have come through directly for her. Is there anyone that have questions for Dominique at this time? If you don't mind, just you can, if you can just, um, if you want to post in the chat very quickly or if you show up hands, so you can just come off mute and ask your, and ask your question. We have about, what, 30 seconds? If I, just a comment. Garrett, oh. thank you. Thank you for being, for running. Thank you for, your, you're very realistic. And if nothing else, you just, you will help Joe Biden get more votes. You're, and and if, if, if you do nothing else but get one vote that he would not normally get, you're doing it right now. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and appreciate that. Go ahead, Becky. And Aquaria, I, I would say the same. Th I would uh, echo that for Dominique also. And I think that the what I would also just wanted to say, it's not really a question, but for Dominique, is so much of the civil rights effort right now is happening in school boards. It is happening. The, the, the battle, the battle for democracy, the battle for the future of this country is happening in school boards right this moment. And so great gratitude to Dominique. And I'm going to just encourage folks to contribute to either Dominique's campaign and Garrett's campaign and their websites are in the chat. Money makes a big difference right now. Right, right. So it sure does. Thank you so much, Vicki. I appreciate that. Okay, well, thank you. And then I think I'm going to turn this over to Aquaria to talk a little bit about the book club. And um, as Becky mentioned, their websites are in the chat. So I, I know Pat will be reminding us and sending it out again. So <laughs> thank you so much, Karen. Well, we are well on our way. The March uh, book club is um, going to meet next Sunday, as a matter of fact, and because it's such an over overwhelming response, we are completely full with RSVP for this particular month. But look and stay tuned for announcements for for an upcoming uh, book. Our book um, this month was from Heather Cox Richardson. We have some great troublers that that are leading that effort, and so those that have signed up, you should have gotten communications from us thus far. Um, and we are looking forward to a wonderful discussion on Sunday, March 17th at two o'clock. Thank you so much. Turning it over. Thanks, Aquarius. Um, if, if you could, if I could share the screen, please, just a little bit. Let me see. Uh-oh, okay. Uh... Becky, so I don't hold up time if, Pam could go ahead first and then you could come back to me. That would be helpful. Yeah, and I'm I'm also, I'm just going to, since PJ is with us, I'm going to, PJ is going to be facilitating the rest of this. So, oh, okay. um, PJ. <laughs> PJ, you want to go to, go to Pam? Thank you. And PJ, you're muted. So just unmute.
<laughs> Doesn't want to. There it is. Hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great. Well, first of all, I want to back up just a second and say thank you uh, to uh, Karen and the candidates uh, for their information and update uh, on the trouble of work. And we're asking that as we go forward, each presenter give us about three minutes. So at, we've already had Aquaria and Karen. So yeah. Pam Woodley, would you enlighten us on Fighting 50? Actually, actually, PJ, I'm ready now if Pam wants me to go ahead. Okay. All right, sure. then. Pam, it'll do take, you mind if we back up to Karen? Yeah, it'll take less than three minutes. So can right. you see my screen that says Decap Democrats March information? Yes. Yes. Okay. So quickly, you know, like I say, we always have tons of things to do. And this month, if you figure out what you would like to do, I do have some more Biden-Harris signs if you want one please email me your name, your address, and your phone number, and how many Biden-Harris signs you would like. I do have some vote cards. They're small little vote cards that people leave in different places. Um, you can leave them you know, at grocery stores or wherever you circulate, and it gives the voting dates as well as where to check your voter registration. I also have some door hangers, and the voting signs look like this. The door hangers have information how Republican policies are killing women. Um, mm -hmm. I have Biden Harris signs that are like this. Um, and then I have early vote now signs if you want any of those. So if you want any of those, you can email me at gotb at decabdens.com or at kr-davenport at bellsouth.net. Um, and if you put down your information, I'll deliver those things to you. But Make sure you give me your address, your name, your phone number, and what you would like and how many you would like. Um, we're always asking people to share accurate information on social media. And right now, um, the Democratic Party, well, let's see what happened here. The Democratic Party is providing um, some signups forms about that I will show you just a little bit later. Um, you can also uh, make sure you keep up with what is going on in the state legislature. As Becky mentioned earlier, we're moving into the last part of what's happening. And there's some bills that have crossed over. There's still bad bills that we have to keep up with. Here's information where you can track those particular bills. Um, these are things that, you know, this is an update that these things did not pass through, but they could come back to haunt us. So we wanna make sure we are aware of what's going on there. Um, I did wanna to bring to your attention, a former troubler wrote an article in the AJC um, and her message is basically, let legislators know that we do not want a license plate that says American first, America first, because it's a perpetuation of things that were pushed during the 1944, the American first party ran on a platform that includes calls for Jews to be sterilized and deported. Um, around the same time, an organization called America First made a patent for a weapon designed to murder Jews in America. So letting our legislators know that we do not want that is really important. Um, I went over the things that are available um, that you can that I can deliver to you. We are also going to have a postcard brigade, and ours is going to be focusing specifically. Um, initially on low voter turnout areas. And this project that we're doing is we'll provide the postcards, we'll provide the message, and we'll provide the stamps. So it's going to be targeted specifically on low voter turnout areas. Once again, we are having a, a fundraiser because you know all this takes money. We'd love for people to dress up and come out. Here's information on the cost of those tickets. And the last thing I want to share is the Democratic Party of Georgia, it has a survey that they are soliciting volunteers. And when I send Pat this information, there's a sign up form. And on this sign up form, they want to know what you want to do. And then they, you, when you submit it, they will contact you. Thank you. Uh, before I before I call on Pam, I've got a question, Karen. The postcards, remember last time you shared a small postcard with me? It was very effective with me. It had a lot of information. 
in passing it out. Is this kind of like the same thing in the same size? Yeah, it's like a small signature small card. Exactly. Okay, then I'm going to be interested in those and I'll put that in the chat. Chat. Okay, Pam Woodley, you're up. Yes. Um, so, okay. Is uh, Becky's going to show my pictures? Okay. Cool. Yeah, just a quick quick update on Fighting 50. And Gara gave a brilliant explanation of all the reasons we're doing this. So I don't need to repeat that. Just want to show you um, there are eight, um, 80 Georgia House seats that are in red districts where usually no Democrat even runs. And that was our goal for all the reasons Garrett expressed was to recruit good people. A lot of, Almost all of them are first time politicians. They have a lot to learn, but they are running for Georgia House as Democrats all around Georgia. Some of them don't even have internet access. They're so rural. Um, so these are very brave people. And I just want to tell one story to indicate why I am so excited about this. So um, one of these women, um, beautiful black woman who is a middle school math teacher, um, and president of her sorority of alumni club and things like that. Got, got tons of friends. She is going to run. She's down near Valdosta. She is going to run against this Republican who in 2020 had no opposition whatsoever. And I was helping her look at this guy's website. And um, at first I was scrolling down his priority and I said, well, he's not so bad. And then I got to the last two, number four. Um, protect against the left's voter fraud schemes. So my head almost exploded. Um, and then number five was keep critical race theory out of our schools. And his district is 35% black and Hispanic. And um, think how they feel, um, you know, seeing that he wants their history kept out of our schools. You know, the history of slavery and lynching and, and what Black Americans have gone through the vote. He doesn't want that taught to students in her school. So I cannot wait to get that woman um, out talking to that, you know, 35% of people, voters in his district who are African American, um, about what, what their representative really stands for and just really make this guy squirm for probably the first time in his life. So that's why we're doing this. And I think there's a few more pictures. Um, we ended up recruiting 38 people, so we're basically halfway there on these 80 seats. Um, and they're all from small towns in Georgia, all over. Really interesting, delightful people. The two troublers, or the three troublers that really um, helped on this were Bob Herndon, who's really my partner in leading it. Carolyn Gorman and Marion Myers, and we will be back around in the future to try and get more of you involved. All right. Great job. Great job, Pam. Thank you so much. Uh, Jane Stewart, <clears throat> yeah. will you? Okay, yeah. tell us about the environment, the work that you're doing. Okay, so our group is co chaired by Michael Beach, who's now, right now, hiking in Patagonia. Uh, so I'll quickly update you on several issues before we get to the Okefenokee, which is our main topic. Firstly, the salt marsh bill that I mentioned on last month's call, which could have drastically changed the ownership of salt marshes in Georgia. Uh, fortunately, this bill didn't get a full house vote, and so it didn't uh, cross over. And it's, so it's dead at the moment, but th this is two years in a row that it's been voted out of committee. So we'll certainly have to be watching for that next year. Secondly, the Public Health uh, Service Commission that we're not focusing on this year, but you remain, may remember that the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, um, who'd taken six months to issue their decision, did overturn a lower court ruling that the current system of statewide elections disenfranchised black voters. So they turn, overturned that decision. So we should have statewide elections now, right? And the answer is no. Those elections can't be scheduled until the 11th Circuit send their ruling back to the lower court, which they haven't done for four months now. 
So the three white male Republicans who were up for election are staying in their seats, which is frustrating. That's another way this conservative court exerts their influence in the state. So finally, on the Okie Finoki, um, I hope you all saw the front page AJC article today that Becky and Pat alerted me to at the beginning of this call. So it's a front page article urging Kemp and John Burns to support protection of the Okie Finoki. Um, as far as protection efforts go, the House Bill 71 never got out of committee. That was the bill that would have protected all future mining efforts along Trail Ridge, would protect Trail Ridge, which is, forms the eastern boundary of the reserve for, uh, in the future. Uh, that didn't get out of committee. And then probably because of pressure from the public and possibly from House leadership, Republicans in the National, in the Environment Committee put forth a bill at the last minute in the week before crossover day. That bill was co-sponsored by Lynn Smith, the chairman who woman who'd not let the other bill out of committee. And they sort of packaged this as a compromise bill um, that would protect the swamp for three years, but it really wasn't. And it also would have allowed easier um, permits for mining. So fortunately that bill never made it out of uh, into a vote. And so it also died in uh, before crossover. The last thing we can do now, and we've only got two weeks to do it, is to send our public comments to the um, EPD. They granted a mining a draft mining permit last month. Um, on March 5th, there was a virtual public hearing. And one of our troublers who's on the call, uh, Gail Watley, um, presented at that meeting. Uh, more than 100 or about 100 people presented in opposition to the EPD granting the full permit. It's just under a draft permit for 60 days while there is a comment period. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure uh, Kemp can intervene if he wants to, but uh, let's hope this AJC article puts pressure on him. But please watch for Pat's um, update after the meeting as to how to send your comments to the EPD and add our voices on and on on this important topic. So thanks, and I'm happy to take any questions. One just final thing, Georgia Conservancy very unfortunately supported this compromise bill for the Okie Finoki. And it was very dramatic that they were dramatically different from all the other um, environmental groups that strongly opposed it. So um, that was very concerning. Okay. Thank you so much, Jane. Pat Bird. It's party time. You're on. You're you're on. Here I am. Uh, we are going to have on uh, April the seventh a gathering. We're calling it a gathering. But y'all, I want you to know it's a party. Yeah, PJ, it's going to yes. be a party. Um, we haven't had a chance to all be together since the pandemic, and so this was designed as a way to get together, have good food have some music, or do some activities, learn the names and faces and recognition of problems that you don't know. Um, so we'll be meeting at Mason Mill Park and we're gonna have wonderful food that is provided for us by a grant we got from National Indivisible. So uh, it's gonna be, we're gonna have great pizza and yes, we are gonna have gluten-free, gluten-free, gluten-free pizza for all of you who want gluten-free, gluten-free, gluten-free pizza. For the rest of us, we will have regular traditional pizza with some vegetarian uh, offers, uh, samples or, or, or types too. Uh, we need some help in getting this party going, especially we need more people to help with setup because it takes a lot to get the things all organized and going. So if you're willing to help us do a little bit of setup, which would mean coming a little bit early and helping get uh, 
tablecloths out and chairs out and things like that. But if you put your name in the chat and just say party setup. And then those of you who are good at programs for adult having a good time kinds of things, activities that are all right. Got a nominee, PJ? Yes, Pauline. <laughs> put, put Pauline, PJ, put Pauline's name in there. And we're going to have people who can help us figure out how to do this really well, but to have a good time. And I'll put the uh, link to register for the for our party into the chat, but also it'll be in the newsletter that's going to be coming out by the end of the week. So you'll have all these links there too. So look forward to April the 7th, put it on your calendar. We're going to have a party and get to have a good time getting to know each other again. Right. All right. Thank you so much. And as as with all the hiccups and everything we had, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to know that we are right on time. Okay. <laughs> I want to thank everyone and I want to encourage all the travelers to attend the next in-person meeting in April. And it's from one to five. And as Pat said, Mason Mill Park. Uh, to see one another and greet one another. We we see each other every month, but seeing in person is still different, okay? We all look different in person. Um, I want to welcome the new troublers uh, and uh, have fun before diving into this year's elections. Uh, full <laughs> tilt. We're going to work real hard, but at least this way we do it just uh, instead of working hard, and playing hard, we're gonna play hard first so we can remember the play when we do the work, okay? <laughs> How about that, okay? Now, the details are gonna be coming, uh, forthcoming soon, and uh, and we'll get more information about that. In the meantime, I need for you all to mark your calendars. Our usual meeting is the usually the second Sunday in, in the month. Well, May, the second Sunday is May the 12th, which is Mother's Day. So we're, 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 we want you to mark your calendar, calendar for the next uh, virtual meeting will be May the 5th at 4 p.m. So Becky, at this time, I'd like to introduce you to introduce us to our closing song. Yes, beautiful. And um, thank you, PJ. And thank you so much for making thanks to Pauline for going and picking up PJ and taking her to her house so she could use her electronics. So it is takes a village to put yeah. these meetings on and gratitude, gratitude to everybody who has participated. And um, I had start we had started out in PJ's absence this meeting just saying how very aware that there are folks on the call that are carrying a lot right now. And so here is um, here is a poem, actually. We're going to do a poem instead of a song. This is a poem that I'm guessing a lot of you know. And if you don't know, um, it's always a gift. So um, here we go. Everyone in the world has gone to bed one night or another with fear or pain or loss or disappointment. And yet each of us has awakened, arisen, uh, somehow made our ablution, seen other human beings, and said, morning, how are you? Find things in you. It's amazing, wherever that abides in the human being, there is the nobleness of the human spirit, despite it all, black and white, Asian, Spanish, Native American, pretty, plain, thin, fat, Vowed of celibate, we rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just cause I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my sassiness upset you? 
Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sexiness offend you? Oh, does it come as a surprise that I dance? As if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, there I go right. PJ, can we just go off? Can we go off uh, off mute for a minute and just all give a little bit of a, of a of a hooray to everybody who has participated and signed up to do something today? It's been a really sure. full, rich meeting. Okay, everybody, unmute yourself. Yes, yes. Here's to twenty twenty four. Two t shirts. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. See you in April in the park. Yeah. Gracias. Thank you for your leadership, everyone. Thank, thanks to Thank everybody, so all the good leaders. Great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So well, so glad it worked. We we yeah. patched it. We patched it together. Yes. 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 Okay, let me see. I want to leave. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.